Okay, so my name is Tony Prokoso. I'm a developer advocate working for AWS. And for those of you, like a couple of questions, what is developer advocate? Basically, I'm your friends. So if you have any questions related on how to build your stuff applications on AWS, I will be your friends. Right? So just ask me any questions. I love questions. Um, and I usually give talks. I produce content, videos. I present at keynotes. Those are my things. Uh, and if you have any questions, just let me know. I do, uh, you can easily reach out to me on these social media, but to be honest with you, I'm more active on LinkedIn. Right? So if you uh, want to ask me something, just um, connect with, uh, with me on my LinkedIn. So today we're going to talk about Gen AI. Right? And how many hours do I have, Mike? I have the, the whole night. Okay, so you stuck with me. So until at 9 p.m., you stuck with me. So if you have anything, um, any questions other than this topic, because in this session, I'm going to share with you on how that you can improve your development productivity with Gen AI and AWS services. Quick question, how many of you are coming from technical background? Cool, most of you, okay. Um, how many of you have tried the Gen AI services? It could be open AI or other things. Okay, okay. Uh, how, what do you use Gen AI for? Share with us. Yes, Mark, I believe. Uh, okay, for social media purpose? Or just for fun, okay, for fun. Uh, anyone else want to share? Why do you use Gen AI for? Customer support, right. So I can say it's going to summarize the conversation history. Right, using RAC. Cool. Any other use cases? Yep. Roughly. Right. So you mentioned about you are using GNI for generating codes. Do you use it for generating codes as well? Okay. Cool, cool. And that's exactly that we're going, I will go, I'm going to share with you on how that you can use uh, GNI to build something. And in this session, I'm going to uh, build with Python because we have Max here. Where is Max? Oh, this is Max. Max, if you haven't know about him, uh, Max here is the uh, current leader for Python user group Singapore. Yeah, so usually I, I code in Go, but because you are here, I respect you. We're going to do it in Python. <laughs> okay, so this is the learning outcomes. You can use AWS Generative AI services today to improve your development productivity. Now, when it comes to Gen AI, right, um, I got a lot of questions since last year. What is generative AI and what, where does it fit? Because we often heard about supervised learning. We heard about reinforcement learning. We heard about deep learning. Where does it fit? So apparently, generative AI is now currently in is a subset of deep learning. It is gener it is powered by foundational models. So within foundational models, you probably heard about LLMs, large language models. That's one of uh, of the example. It is being trained by a large data sets. Right. So that's how it learns. Now, um, hopefully, this helps you to understand about. Uh, generative uh, AI. Now, what I love from AWS, this is, you probably think that I'm biased, but I'm not. What I love from AWS is that uh, since 2018, when the machine learning boom was in, the, in this space, AWS has been trying to democratize machine learning for everyone. Now, the biggest issue with machine learning, we haven't touched gener generative AI. We talk about machine learning first. The biggest issue with machine learning back then was only those who have this competency, who has uh, money to build uh, teams, who has this kind of skill set to understand about the statistics, the algorithm, and also the infrastructure needed. Only those who can run a proper machine learning pipelines and this hard. Right. So that's why we uh, AWS built this kind of three layers. We built the infrastructure. We built the main services, and we also built uh, API-based ready machine learning services. Some of you probably already heard about uh, Amazon Recognition. No, uh, Amazon Lex, Amazon Transcribe. Those, well, those are the services that you can easily integrate with API. 
And you also probably ever heard about SageMaker, right? And SageMaker is for machine learning engineers. Now, the same, the same layers applied uh, by AWS for Gen AI as well. So on the, uh, on the bottom layer, we have this layer for infrastructure to train foundation models. For those who want to build uh, their own FM models, they, for those who want to process the data, uh, build and train doing fine tuning, AWS provides you with the required infrastructure. Now, that's probably not be the case for everyone here. Some of you probably want just to build uh, uh, Gen AI ready applications, and you can use Amazon Bedrock. That is on the middle layer. Now, Bedrock is amazing. Why? Because imagine this. If you want to build or generate an image like Mark did, you need, you're probably going to use stable diffusion. If you want to create like a content, you're probably going to use OpenAI, right? Now, Amazon Bedrock hosts uh, five major providers of foundation models. You can use stable diffusion. You can use anthropic cloud. You can use even Mistral which is really uh, highly effective foundation models. You can also use Command Cohere. And all of those foundation models, you can easily integrate with one universal API. And that's really amazing. Why? Because now you have this flexibility to choose which FM that suits your needs, and you don't need to dwell with different APIs. Uh, I, will, I will show you uh, how it looks like for Amazon Petro. Now. And I will touch base around 15 to 20 minutes on Amazon Petrock because it's very crucial for us. Um, it's also very crucial for AWS. Why? Because on the top layer, we also have Amazon Q. So Amazon Q is a, a Gen AI assistant that was built that and can be tailored for your needs. And also have uh, Amazon Code Whisper. With Amazon Code Whisperers, you can, I mean, you can quickly uh, develop stuff using the IDE or even code catalyst. Now, fun fact is Amazon Q and Amazon Code Whisper, they are powered by $35 AWS credit codes. Who can answer this question? Um, Amazon Q and Amazon Code Whisper, there are two services that are powered by fill the blank. Nope. One, ladies, <laughs> that's, not, that's not recorded, right? <laughs> Come on, ladies. That's wrong, right? Who, who, who has that? Yeah, you got $25 in those credit cards, right? It's powered by Amazon Petrock. And Amazon Petrock is very versatile because you can generate code, generate content, generate image. You can even generate the embeddings. Anyone here understand about the uh, embeddings or factor database? Okay. So if you uh, want to uh, dive deep into embeddings and Gen AI uh, specific, more advanced stuff, we can probably run a Gen AI workshop together with uh, Mike and Max. So, so these are the three layers. Now, the first thing that I want to share with you is Amazon Bedrock. Now, you probably think that, oh, Amazon Bedrock is super cool that we can generate content, synthetic code, or even create image or even embedding. But that's not only the case. With Amazon Bedrock, it also has a couple of features that I really love. The first one is that you can implement end-to-end -end retrieval augmented generation, or RAG, with Amazon Bedrock. And it's super easy. Now, uh, anyone here understand what RAG is for? Yes. It is up to when you want to talk to the store. Yes, yeah, correct. So with RAG, is actually that you can interact with your own document by creating the embeds in uh, in the factor representation and then host it into a database. And why do we why do people use RAG? Because it improves accuracy. Sometimes when you ask like uh, these Gen AI services, they respond back with some things that we call as hallucinations, right? And to minimize the hallucinations, most of the organizations, developers, builders, they use RAG. 
Right. So the way it works is that it's going to create the embedding in the factor uh, formats into a database that for supports for the uh, embeddings like Aurora Postgres or even OpenSearch. And with knowledge base, the features for right on Amazon Backlog, you just need to upload the documents. It's going to automatically create the OpenSearch uh, database or you can easily integrate with Aurora Postgres and then you can interact with your document. That's cool. The other thing that I found it's really useful is agents. Agents is not a, it's not a new terminology that was introduced by Amazon Petro. It's actually a terminology of features that have been here for a while since last year, I believe. So with agents, you can have these Gen AI services to call an API on behalf of you. For example, if you have a travel booking applications powered by Gen AI, it not only can provide you with recommendation, but it can also book the flights, the hotel for you by using agents. Now that's very powerful. And the other thing that I really like about Amazon Bedrock, there's a feature called guardrails. And then there's a lot of things that, that I, think, I think it's best if I just show it to you how it looks like. Can you see my screen? Oh. Yep. Can you see my screen? <laughs> so this is AWS console. And this is Amazon Petro. Now, so if you just getting started with Amazon Petrock, this is what I suggest you to do. First, you can find the base models. Here that you can find that we have Cloud by Anthropic. We also have Command by Cohere. We have uh, Embed by Cohere as well. We have Jurassic uh, from, uh, we also have Llama from Meta and all those popular foundation models. You, you just need to uh, uh, pick and choose whichever that suits your need. Now, the next thing that I will uh, advise to you is that you go to the chat playground. Now, this chat playground, you can select the model, right? So you can, uh, my personal favorite is uh, Cloud Tree Haiku. Right? And then you can just write a prompt, probably something like, uh, write me a story about Singapore Laksa. It's always food, I don't know why. So now you can have this kind of, uh, you can try uh, the different financial models. You can also set the configurations. Now, each financial model, they have different configurations. Now, what I really like about this console, particularly is that you can compare. So you can compare the model with other models. Like for example, if I want to test with Llama, so, and this gives you the flexibility to understand, oh, actually for this particular use case, Llama works best for me, right? Now, uh, another thing that I wanted to show you is that you can also create an image, like, uh, for example, uh, this one, Sri Lanka tea plantation. This is, uh, I'm loading this one example. Yeah. So you can use the stable diffusion and you can also use Amazon Titan to generate you the image. Now I'm using this 0 0.8, which is, I believe is the legacy. You can also use the 1.0, which provide you with more customizations, like you can add negative prompt. Like for example, this figure, you don't want that to be in the image. You can also upload the reference image. Uh, if you're wondering how they, you people have this nice cartoon style of photo of themselves, they can use this. You can also use this as well. You can just try to cartoonize me. Now, but there's something that I, I think I need to share with you is that, um, but this one, a burger, right? So I put the, the prompt here, a burger, cinematic, editorial photography, photography shot on 70 millimeter lens, like a lot of things, right? And, and it gives you different image. For me, I really love this. Because two reasons. The first one, it is a burger. The other one, it has a bokeh uh, kind of style. It's like a blurry, so it looks more professional. 
And that makes me think, as a developer, as a builder, even if you're not a developer, something that you really need to have, one skill, is about prompt. So if you, if you probably ever heard about prompt engineering, right? So because most of the organizations, they um, hire uh, prompt engineers, which, in, which I think is going to be not going, going to be any role anytime soon. It's going to be a skill that we, everyone in this room, needs to have. Now, there are a couple of things about prompt engineering. Um, there are a few techniques called uh, zero-shot learning. The, there's a uh, few shots or multi-shots learning. And those are the techniques that you can use to interact better with your FM. Right. So if you're just getting started, besides understanding the which FM that you need to use, also please learn about prompt engineering. There's a really good course on uh, Coursera for free that you can join. I think it's a partnership between AWS and Coursera with Andrew Ng as well. So yeah, um, I do have some of these. This one, if you want to learn about uh, prompt engineering, we also have a documentation on this. Uh, uh, we have the zero shot. We have few shots. We also have a couple of uh, resources. Oh, it's really cool, right? Amazon Bedrock, now you understand why I say it's amazing. You can play in the playground. But for us who can talk with the machine, we want more. And the fortunate thing is that you can interact with Amazon Bedrock using API through AWS SDK. And all of the features that I show to you, you can do it with code. So here's the code. Um, for example, here. Oh, stop. Too small. What? Okay. Okay. So, yeah. I I don't know what is this. I mean, I think <laughs> this is is this in Thai because I just delivered this session uh, in Bangkok a couple of weeks ago, but. I just want to show it to you. This is how you interact with Bedrock. You create a Bedrock client. Sorry, you need to use Boto3, which is the library. Um, and then we have a Bedrock client, this way that you in instantiate the object that you in uh, interact with. And then you just need to provide uh, the body, the payload. We have from uh, max tokens to sample temperature, which is respective to the foundational models. In this case, I use Entropic Plot version 2. Right. So I did some changes on this uh, source code a couple of hours ago, uh, but luckily we have Max here. If there's anything wrong, probably that you can help me to debug it. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to run it. Hopefully it works. Um, I'm not really, uh, let me try. Oops. Ah. So, um, I'm going to okay. Okay. So if I run this, um Write me a story about what food do you want to use for this example? Chicken rice. <laughs> Roughly. So the SDK will going to interact with the Amazon Petrol. And in response, that we're going to get the uh, well, we can get the results. It's on the JSON format. And here it is. It's a story about chicken rice. Okay, so <laughs> this is a really story. <laughs> So this is cool, right? So we can we can you can interact not only on the playground. So if you want to build a Gen AI based applications, the easiest way is Amazon Petrol. Now, I'm going to do another uh, stuff. Like for example, um, hi, I'm I'm Mike. I'm Michael. What's your name? Hi. I'm Claude. Okay. And then, uh, do you remember me? But so it doesn't have any personal memories. 
right? Anyone knows why? Twenty-five dollar the square codes. Okay. Anyone else? Look at picture. Again. Okay. Why? Why doesn't remember? Ah, okay. Stateless twenty-five dollar Airbus credit cards. It doesn't have any context, right? So what should we do about this? Give more context. Not twenty-five dollar for you, man. <laughs> okay, but that's correct. We need to give more context, and this is something that I really like about Amazon Bedrock because it also supports the not not Bedrock supports. Anyone here knows Langchain, right? So Langchain is a popular framework. So I'm going to give you solutions to this issue. The solution is really simple: that you need to inject the past conversation into the next query, right? But the question is that how that we could inject this uh, this current conversation, where we can store this. The easiest way to store it is in put memory, memory. Server database. Right. Memory is expensive. Right. Memory is expensive. Um, so you can put it into a database. And why I really like about Langchain is that it has, oops, not that one, Langchain, uh, DynamoDB. Uh, this one. So Langchain is one of the most popular framework that you can use to, to bootstrap your applications of Gen AI. And I really like the Langchain. Why? Because I don't need to redo everything from scratch. Like for example, obviously that we can build this uh, uh, get, put, and update data into Amazon Petro, as Amazon DynamoDB in this case. But what should I? Right. So we can use a uh, um, uh, link chain to integrate with AWS DynamoDB. And one particular library is DynamoDB, DynamoDB uh, message history. Yes. Uh, can you see it? Right. Oh, just move. Yeah. So there you go. See now. Now let's do uh, another test. So in the next demo, I'm going to show you how to integrate with Langchain. Okay. Okay. So we have uh, Langchain, Langchain, Langchain. Everything is about Langchain here. And what I really like is that I can inject the session. If you already working with AWS, are uh, you probably uh, familiar with this session object? And then here I'm creating this uh, DynamoDB session resource, and I just need to pass it here. Right. So it's really easy. Right. So here I give a template. So prompt template is something that Langchain already already has. I'm just going to utilize and just replace the history with the past conversation and the input is for the next query. Yeah, so let's try to run the application. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Is this one gonna work? Okay, cool. So, hello, I'm Michael. What's your name? So um, this is the, hello, Michael, I'm Todd. OK, it's nice to meet you. Uh, and then if I just do the same thing, do you remember me? <laughs> Not this one. So probably because of about the name. Let me change to Andre. <laughs> Okay. What's my name? I think it could be easier. Like. You introduce yourself as Andre in the previous message. Right. So, um, and here's the thing, right? You, if you go to the Amazon DynamoDB, which is not listed here, is it here? Um, let me try to find DynamoDB. Oh, no. So, tables, I think I'm going to. Go to Singapore. Um, 
we should have one or two queries here. See, you go. Right. So we have all the data, uh, the past conversations here in DynamoDB. And you can also use um, MySQL or Postgre or even SQLite. That really depends on adapter uh, with LangChain. And but because everything is, is you can use SDK uh, and to interact with Amazon Bedrock, you can easily create a serverless API. So you can create an API gateway, AWS Lambda, Lambda function, uh, sorry, uh, DynamoDB to create the uh, applications. That is exactly what I'm doing for my Telegram bot. So I integrate uh, Amazon Bedrock with my Telegram so I can easily ask questions. Okay, so um, that's about Amazon Petrol. Now, let's um, that hopefully that gives you uh, a context on uh, why Amazon Petrol is amazing, and uh, because it's becoming the foundational of most uh, AWS services. I haven't talked about uh, uh, QuickSight, Connect, and all those AWS supply chains. They also been powered by Amazon Petrol. Now, why I chose the topic to improve development productivity because of these statistics. And this is kind of a bit concerning. Like from Gartner survey uh, from last year, like 73% of developers, we spend our time on running and maintaining applications instead of building more features. Right. And that, that uh, came to my mind, how that we can improve this with Gen AI? Now, if we see the overall life cycle of development, we can divide it into six stage. The first one, we need to understand and learn. We usually do a research. What kind of framework do I need to use? What kind of resources do I need to use? Is this service has limitation? How much does it cost, and, and uh, et cetera. And then we plan and we decide, and then we develop, and then we review, usually that we do unit testing. And then we monitor and test our applications and we maintain. Now, um, I understand I, I, I was involved in Amazon Q and Amazon Code Race before its launch. And I can say that with Amazon Q, you can easily use uh, Amazon Q to maintain, understand and learn and plan and decide. While for Amazon Code Race Pro, you can use it for developing, uh, reviewing and monitoring and testing. So in this case, I'm going to show you how that you can do it. Uh, you can use these two services for each stage. Now, anyone here knows about Amazon Q? Right. Just one? Two. OK, $25. No, just kidding. No, no, no. So Amazon Q is, um, uh, so we have Amazon Q for business, and we also have Amazon Q for developers. So Amazon Q is actually your Gen AI assistance that you can tailor for your work. Now, there are two kinds of types of Amazon Q. As I mentioned, Amazon Q Business and Amazon Q Developer. And it, Amazon Q also power Amazon QuickSight. So if you want to, like for example, create a stunning report, stunning visualization, data story, generating insight from your data, you can use Amazon Q in Amazon QuickSight. You can also use Amazon Q in Amazon Connect and AWS Supply Chain. But for today, we're going to talk about Amazon Q uh, Developer. So in a nutshell, Amazon Q, with Amazon Q, you can use it for generating uh, documentation. You can do it, or you can use it for research and planning, uh, security scanning, uh, context switching. And this is something that uh, I really hate because sometimes when I was in the it was in the flow, and then somebody asked me, Donnie, can you help me with? And then it's gone, right? And then I need to redo all the um, research uh, from the scratch. The first feature that I would like to share with you is Amazon Q conversational or Q&A, right? So now if I think I need to, uh, I, I'm going to show you how, what, how it looks like. Uh, Okay, so just go here. And Amazon Q is available for you today. You don't need to enable it. All you need to do is just click on this um, Q button, and then there you go. So it's currently in preview. Um, and then I can uh, probably like ask uh, Amazon Q about, I need to build serverless APIs 
with 100k requests per day. What are the uh, AWS services for me to use? So you can just ask QOA about the uh, your questions on building on AWS. And one particular thing that uh, that why you should use Q when it comes to building on AWS because it has been trained of 17 years of documentations from AWS. So it gives you uh, 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 a good answers and also accurate. Here it provides you some uh, suggestions. AWS Lambda, okay. Amazon API Gateway, correct. AWS Step Functions, Amazon DynamoDB, and SQS and SNS. I love this uh, answer. And it can also give you the reference. So if you if you go here, it will give you the documentations if you want to dive more into these resources. Now, but it, the queue live anywhere that you work or you uh, interact with AWS. On the documentation side, you can also use queue. And it gives you, it minimizes the friction for you to lose the context because it follows wherever you work for AWS. So you can ask like a subsequent question. Right, so that is uh, Q. Oops. Now, now, now you already know how to use Q. You can ask them away. And the next thing that we need to do now is to code, right? So Amazon Cloud Explorer is something that um, is something that you can use because it has this auto completion and it gives you with the best practices. For example, like here in this case, I have a Python application, right? So like for example here, oh, this is too small. So example like create a function to save the save data into DynamoDB. And then there you go. You can also like uh, get another variance uh, of the scope whispers by just using the arrow. Right? That's super cool. Now we can also ask you, like for example, I don't understand about this line. What is this? The bottle tree client. So what I can do is that I can open the chat panel. I can copy and paste, but there's a better way to do this. I can just uh, do a right click, send to Amazon Q and explain. And this is really, uh, this is an easy way for you to understand if you got, you know, a, a legacy code or course that you don't understand. You can just ask you and it's going to provide you with the, um, with, with the explanations and the answers on what is this uh, alliance is doing. Right. Okay, so that's really cool. Um, and then something that I really like uh, from Amazon Q, like for example, um, create a function to, uh, to log uh, for logging, create a logging function. But you can also ask you, like Amazon Cosperus, to generate code for you. Now, here you go. Oh, create logger. Oh, and then I see I read all the answers. I think I'm going to love this, but I need this uh, this code. And then you can just need to click insert a cursor and it's, there you go. Right. So that's one of pretty cool way to accelerate your development productivity. And um, something that I usually do, like for example, I sometimes I'm really lazy to create documentation, right? So what I can do is this, uh, create a doc string for safe data function. So not only with code whisperer and queue, it could help you to, uh, uh, create, oh, sorry, uh, generate codes but it can also create documentation. But right. here I have this uh, doc, uh, documentation doc string format, and you can also, like for example, I want to create unit tests uh, for safe data function. There you go. And, and this is how I use Q and code whisper every day to do 
mundane tasks, the boring tasks that I really don't like to do. Uh, this is one way that you can it can improve your development productivity. And and Code Whisperer and Code Whisperer in general, actually, I use it for coding, but you can also use Code Whisperer for database. And in this case, I I want to create a SQL statement uh, for a table creation with following columns. And there you go. I just need to use this one. Is primary key. Cool. Done. Oh, I want to uh, create a SQL statement uh, to uh, insert fake data into user's table. There you go. All right, so this is how that you can use Q and Code Whisper. And I'm still on this uh, IDE. With Amazon Q, you can actually do a lot of things. You can use slash dev, which is, is going to include all. So let's say that you want to create one functions for logging for all the functions that you have, sorry, files that you have in your workspace. You can ask a slash dev, which is going to create a plan for you. Or if you want to upgrade your Java 8 or 11 or 11 Maven project to Java 17, you can use slash transform. For those who have, I mean, experienced how hard it was to upgrade a Java application, this is actually a really uh, enlightening. It's going to be really easy for you to upgrade by using uh, Amazon Q uh, code transformation. Right? Okay, so, yes. Uh -huh. That's a good one. I, get, I need to, uh, I owe you $25 because I almost forgot to mention that Code Whisperers is also available and Q also available in IntelliJ. You can use IntelliJ ID, uh, you can use PyCharm, you can use uh, Data Grip as well. Um, and what else? Uh, WebStorm as well. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that after the session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so it supports IntelliJ and Visual Studio Code and also Cloud9 if you use it or use a Lambda Code Editor. Yeah. So, yeah. Because I'm using Enfim as well. <laughs> okay, so um, and that is uh, Q and Code Whisperer. Um, what else that I probably forgot? I think that's all for now. Now, once that you build your application, right, you need to monitor and test. Um, you need to monitor and test your applications, right? And like for example, you want to. Uh, troubleshoot your network. You can also use Q in your console for that. Like for example, it give it give me an explanation why I cannot SSH to my EC2 instance, and it give me a traverse path details, and it shows me which part that I probably need to fix. Right. Now, let's say that you want to um, you need to create an EC2 instance. How many of you knows how um, EC2 instance types that we have currently on AWS? No, no idea. Huh? No. <laughs> no, 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 more than three hundred. Right. So three hundred plus, and we understood um, it's uh, getting a barrier for uh, developers to uh, build using EC2. That's and but the good thing is that you can use Q to get advice. Like for example, I want to use um, Amazon EC2 for. HPC, high performance computing. I want to use uh, Graviton. Priority will be a uh, price performance. And the way it's going to do is that it's going to send and generate the prompt to Amazon Q, and then it's going to list you down all the available instance type for you to use. Right? So that's cool. That's cool. Uh, here we go. So you can use a C7G. Uh, uh, this is actually the Graviton instance, exactly what I need. Now, and then probably you are um, doing something on uh, like AWS Lambda, you're building a serverless API, right? So I have a serverless 
um, fun lambda function here to list data. Is it too small? Okay, list data on my DynamoDB, right? And then I just want to test it. So I am going to test it. It doesn't run. Yeah, it doesn't have any payload. So I'm going to test my IWS standard function. So now executing. It's going to uh, save data and then into DynamoDB, right? Oops. So like this, this is an error. Now with Q, fortunately, I can troubleshoot this issue. So when I, most of the services on AWS that you can troubleshoot with Amazon Q, it provides you a way to understand the issue and how to remediate by clicking this button, help me to resolve. It says that the role attached to the Lambda lacks the DynamoDB scan permission. And sometimes that happens to us a lot. We know this, this code is going to work. It's just sometimes probably the permission or probably the resource is not available. And with Amazon Q, it helps you to identify which, what is the issue and which the solution that you need to uh, uh, use to resolve the issue. So it says, go to the IAM console and then select the role, which is the current role for AWS Lambda function. You can also create inline policy at this following, following policy document and create policy. Right? So that's, um, uh, that is uh, Amazon Q troubleshooting. Now, another thing about Amazon Q and uh, Amazon Code Whisperer, something that I really like, and this is a, one of the good practice that you need to implement right now, is a security scan. So security scan is one feature that is going to run static file analysis, SAST, on your codes in your project to check if there's any flaws on security or even any suggestions to improve performance. And that is uh, Amazon Code Whisperer security scan. Now, while waiting, I'm going, because it's going to uh, scan all files in this project. Now, you're probably wondering, right? So what, are, what is the base of Amazon Code Whisperer security scan? So with Amazon Code Whisperer security scan, I think I have it here somewhere. Oh, this one. It's using Amazon Code Guru detector library. It has more than 100 detectors. Like, for, uh, for example, resource leak, TensorFlow, uh, redundant softmax, AWS insecure transmission. So you get everything here. This kind of mechanisms is already being implemented by Amazon Code Whisperer uh, security scan. See, you can see here, we have resource leak. Oh, okay. This one, demo.py. So you can see this, I think this is, looks good, lah. there's nothing wrong with this, but it seems that it could probably potentially to have a resource leak in this case. And we also have um, improper certificates, so this is certificate uh, validation, and this is the, oh, this is a resource leak, because it's using regex to search against the username and file name within the file system, right? So. The way that I usually use the security scan is before you uh, before you commit your code. So you have this uh, good security measure starting from your IDE before you commit it into your Git repository. All right. Um, what else do I have? Uh, we've covered this. Um, yeah, I think I've already. Uh, show you everything. So I think that will be at the end of the session. Will we accept any questions for now? Yeah, any, questions? any questions? And also please provide your feedback. We want to know what are the things that uh, you think that we could improve the services and also what kind of things that you want uh, us to cover more in the next meetups. Yeah, any questions? Okay. Okay, so that's a good question. So the question is, that, is there any token limits uh, when we use Amazon Co-Whisperer and also Amazon Q? Right now, no. 
So uh, that's a really good question because I believe you're coming from the input and output tokens from FMs, but for Amazon Q and for Whisperers, we don't have that limitation. Hi. Any other questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the limitation is probably for a couple of services that uh, for the troubleshooting is currently uh, exists in uh, US East 1 and US West 2. Um, and I think that's all. So only for uh, some regions. But in the fullness of time, the Amazon Q will be available in all the regions. Yep. And the other questions? It could be Amazon Bedrock. Yes. Uh, the uh, the PPT? Oh, the coach there. Oh, definitely. I'm going to share you in three days' time. Give me time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Yes. Yes, that's a good one. Um, so I can show you show it to you. So the question is that is is there any features to fine tuning? So, you see what? Oh no. So what we have at the moment is that you can use. Yeah, you can use Amazon Petro here uh, to uh, fine tuning. Yeah. Now there are a couple of um, FMs that are available for you to use, like Mistral, like uh, Llama, like and uh, Clody as well. Yeah. So fine tuning for those who haven't heard about this is that you you can create a custom model for specific tasks or specific domain. Uh, there are two kind of approach. You can, you can use a domain adaptation fine tuning, or you can use instruction based fine tuning. Those two are different uh, approach for a specific tasks. Now, probably you have a question. Okay, so we have rack and we have fine tuning. Which one that I need to use, right? Now, generally, people use uh, rack or retrieval augmented generation because what they need is just to improve the accuracy of the response coming from the FMs. If that's what you need, REC is the solution. But if you want the FM to do a specific task in a specific domain or a specific instruction, you might want to use fine tuning. Now, cost wise, fine tuning is more expensive than REC. So if you want to do uh, things to, for your use cases, I suggest you to uh, implement REC first before you went for fine tuning. But another question? Yes. So in bedrock is actually is a serverless. So you don't need to have uh, to run any EC2 at all. So you just need to call the API and then you will get the response coming. Oh, 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 that's a good one. I, I haven't tried. I haven't tried. So, um, but I think it's something that probably could answer your question is that we, Amazon Bedrock use input and output token as two uh, pricing dimensions. Uh, but, uh, but for me, I love using Mistral. Mistral by far is the fastest FM for my use case. But for your use case, probably you need to have something different. Yeah. Yep. Uh, any other questions? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you make sure that things that you don't want going in doesn't go? Mm -hmm. Like how do you obfuscate certain things that here that you have a user name in your in your code or your comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. Others, Oh, that's a good question about security and privacy on using um, the foundational models. Okay, let's start with Q and Code Whisperers. So none of your input is going to be transferred to AWS to improve the services at all. So that's one security and privacy that we really, is really uh, uh, important job for us. Now for the foundational models, especially on cracks, because it has a lot of uh, internal data, you can use um, this, um, uh, your, your own uh, KSM. You can use your own security key 
uh, to encrypt the data, and then it's going to be used for um, Amazon Bedrock to improve the models. Yeah. So um, your data is yours in this case. You can encrypt it. You can um, you can you can use the rack or even fine tuning without any concerns about your data is going to be collected. Yeah. As, and to answer that questions, you can find more. For example, this one. You can see this one. Uh, we have a. If you want to learn more about this uh, responsible AI policy, uh, there's a link whenever you use Amazon Q. All right. Any other questions? Yes, Ananda. Oh, bedrock pricing. So bedrock pricing, uh, okay. So in a nutshell, like I can show you some of example. Um, okay, so, so there are two dimensions when it comes to pricing on bedrock. You need to pay for the input token which is the query that you pass to your Amazon Petro, and the output token, which is the response generated by the Amazon Petro foundational models. And this is something that you can try to limit by using the, that is one, the token. Like for example, I select model, entropic, IQ, apply. You can define the maximum length. Now, pricing-wise, uh, as I mentioned, there are two dimensions, the input token and the output token. You can get more details here, like, for example, Entropic, um, the total cost for 11K uh, and then uh, 11K tokens uh, and then 4K output tokens is 0 0.184 USD. Right. So I think it's kind of a bit reasonable. 11k tokens is around 7,000 is worth. So that's good. Now this is uh, this is a really uh, if you if you already uh, ask yourself a questions about bedrock pricing, I really suggest you to identify which foundational models best for your use case. For general purpose, I always advise you to use uh, Mistral.ai because it has a good price performance. Uh, it's really, really fast. I, I usually, I, for the Mistral AI um, 7B, I believe, I even can deploy it on my laptop. So it's really that uh, low, uh, it's really efficient, it's uh, low usage, you can use Mistral. Yeah, any other questions? Yes. Yeah. I just wanted to know, uh, like, some, like, some interesting aspects for, like, hack uh, upon I love the idea. I mean, yeah, I mean, if the question is how they are you, I built a bedrock for Telegram chatbot. So, I, how many of you use Telegram? Oh, okay. So, there's a one idea for article for me to create. <laughs> so, um, the way it works is when you build Telegram bot, you need to register with the bot father, right? And then the way it works, uh, you can create a webhook into your API. So in my case, I built a simple AWS Lambda serverless API with Amazon API Gateway, AWS Lambda, and DynamoDB. That's all. And then the logics, I put everything in AWS Lambda. I can create image. I can create chat. I can ask for... Uh, code code specific as well, uh, and then it will return me back to the telegram. Um, I don't I don't have any I, I haven't built the 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 GitHub repository, but if there's something that all of you are interested, I probably will publish it in next month. Um, but any other questions? Yes. Okay. Um, so. I, I don't have this answer for that for the moment, but what I suggest is that if you're using AWS, all of the requests is going into CloudTrail. So if I were you, I'm going, first I'm going to set the AWS budget. But 
The next thing is that I'm going to set the call trail. So with the call trail, you can create a webhook, not webhook. Uh, you can call, you can create a notifications to SNS to inform you if there's any specific things uh, beyond your specific X numbers. Of course, there's a custom solutions that you need to integrate with AWS Lambda and SNS as well. But I think I think that's uh, one way that you can use it. So what I did for my Telegram uh, chatbot is that I I use uh, API Gateway uh, usage throttling. So with the usage throttling feature, I can limit a specific uh, request from this X user. So if there's if it's already gone the limit, uh, which is being triggered by the cloud trail, it's going to be blocked. Yeah, so that's that's how I did it in my way. Oh, that's a good one. I don't have the answer for that, but I'm going to keep you posted. But, so your your question is that if is there a way that we can know the cost for specific resources before the billings comes up? I don't want to know if you're going to pay for it, so it's hmm. limited. You want to know how much it's going to cost. Yeah. Got it. That's a good one. Okay. Any other question? No? All right. Uh, okay. So, last chance $25 for those who want to ask me a question. You're done already. You already got $25. <laughs> Who else are you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, my question, what are the tools that you're going to use? Okay, so the question is that, which EC2 that we should use to create embedding for REC uh, use case? Which tools that you're going to use to create the embedding? Okay. So if you ask me, it will be use Amazon Python or even Cohere Embed. The reason why, because embedding is something that's really crucial. Um, because like in my benchmark, if I don't have enough uh, power to create the embedding is going to fail somewhere in the middle and we don't want that. Now, the best way to do it is that you use a surface. Let me show you. You can use a surface, which is Amazon Bedrock, by the way. And show. Um, not this one. Okay, so change this is text select model oh, not this one um this is um uh, oh, this one so the best way is that you 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 have your application you have the documents already and then you count it based on what you need. And then you just use Amazon Bedrock using Python embeddings. And then the return will be a factor, uh, you know, the factor of responses, which you can easily include into the database that you want to uh, put your embeddings. It could be or it could be Postgres, it could be open source, it could be uh, something else. Yeah. So and then another another solution is that you can also use um call here embed english so it's going to return you the factors as well but something that i think you need to be mindful is that not all database could store the factors so you need to understand the compatibility between the factor responses the embeddings in and the database uh, most likely you're going to be okay with postgre uh, pg factor I, mean, I, I I haven't got any issues with that, but you can also want to try to use open source serverless. Yeah. Which one going to be cheaper? Amazon Titan is for me is way cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. Yes, you can you can use custom models, fine tuning within the custom models. You can fine tune the models based on your needs. You can uh, train the existing furniture models. There's Llama, there's uh, Cla uh, Claude for a specific task. Yeah, I mean that if you're not you know not happy with the responses, but I suggest that you do a lot of tests before you go to fine tuning because it's kind of bit complicated and quite expensive. Awesome. All right. Okay. So I think my time is up. Um, I do have something. So for those who uh, who I mentioned earlier that you got credit cards, please come to me after the event. And I also have um, a new, not a new initiative. I just have a couple of credits that I want to share with all of you. So, but I need something in return. If you, if you can create content, it could be an article, it could be a podcast, it could be a video, yeah. And then if you, um, if you, if you can share with me, I'm going to select some of the content that you created. And for those who got selected, I will give you $50 and other credit cards, right? So, um, so you can just scan the QR code. Please save the link. Once that you finish the article, you can submit it into this uh into this pr code let's say that we're going to uh announce it mike actually going to announce it uh once that we close it probably three weeks time three weeks time is okay yes huh really you sure it doesn't work it's hard to scan. Ah, okay. All right. You are correct. Let me try to. Mm. Ah. Yes. It works. Are you sure? There you go. Does it work? Awesome. Okay, so. Um, the way it works is that uh, you need to log in into AWS Builder ID, and that makes it way more secure for you. Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Is it this one or the previous one? The previous one as well. <laughs> I like I like that. I like that. Okay. Uh, how to do that? Oh, how about this? Can we share this on the? Can we can we can share meetup? Cool. Let's do it. Are we going to share this on the meetup page? Um, what is the best way to do this? Yeah, um, there's a good one. I can send you the the uh, the QR code. Let me try. Uh, yep. Thanks, Tony, again for the sharing. Thank you. Thank you.